Yo, we're, gonna, we're starting a new series today, Spring Cleaning. How many of you really actually do a spring clean in your house? You actually do. You open up all the windows. You go from top to bottom. You actually do a spring clean. It's one of the most satisfying feelings in the world because your white baseboards turn white again. It's satisfying. I love, I love taking something and, well, you know, first of all, why don't you just look around the room and, and realize, like, how many not empty chairs we have. I'm just forewarning you, like, we're, there, you know, like, when you take steroids, Brandon? <laughs> Brandon, you remember that? Like, you take them and you're like, whoa, I get huge. Remember that, Brandon? I feel like that's, like, that's like the pill we took in 2019. Or injection, I guess. I guess it would be. Anyways. Bad. Well, as you can tell, I've never done them. So, I mean, it's all good. But I feel like that's where we are. I feel like we are, we're expanding in a, in a rapid way. And so get excited about what God's doing in this house. Um, because expansion is healthy. Don't be annoyed that there's not an open seat next to you. Get excited. Get excited. Understand why we rope off so that the ushers can have open seats for someone. We actually had a family walk out a couple weeks ago, and we had to grab them. We're like, what? And they're like, well, there's no empty chairs. We're like, no, 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 no. That's why was, we, have, we have a whole section reserved for you. But that's why we rope off everything strategic around here so we can have places for people to sit because God is moving in this place, and we are growing. Amen. Growing. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Copy it. It's good. It's good. I'm excited. So today we're starting spring cleaning, and, and I love to see uh, uh, something that is dirty turned to clean because there's just something about it. You know, you take a, a room that's been walked in for a long time, and then you vacuum it, and you set those vacuum lines. And there's a way to do it, just so you know if you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. There is a way to set vacuum lines, just so you know. It's a there's a form to it, and you need to learn it. If you don't know it, it's on YouTube. It's a tutorial. You can check it out. <laughs> Seriously. Um, but I love it. And I, I, think, I think what we do and, and take care of here on earth, um, I think God wants us to do the same thing with our spiritual body. The way that we take care of the, way that we take care of the things that, that are in our life, God wants us to do the same things in the way that we, as a spirit man and a spirit woman, are set up, he wants us to do the same thing in there. Yeah. And so every once in a while, you, you, you fall into a rut of, of normality. Every, every once in a while, you fall into a, a, a routine of, of Christianity. Every once in a while, you fall into a, 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 a ritual that you just, it's kind of like it just becomes normal. It, you, it just pulls you in because, I mean, it's already a set rut, so... We just kind of set in it, and it feels good because there's no wobbling. You just kind of, it's what I've always done, so it's just who I am. Take it or leave it. And God's like, no, 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 today I want to break you out of what you're used to. I want you to spring clean from the top to the bottom. Everybody knows you always start from the top, right, because if you vacuum and then you dust everything, you're doing things backwards. So you got to go from the top to the bottom. You always start at the top, work your way down so that way dust settles and then you clean all the, right? Does anybody not, anybody ever vacuumed your kitchen and then you clean off the countertops and you hate every second of it because, yeah, okay. So you clean from the top to the bottom. You always walk your way down and clean because dust settles. And the same thing is, is in our, our spiritual life. You have to walk, you have to look at each thing. Okay, how's my prayer life? How's my worship life, my praise life? How's my private time with God? How's my reading of his word and learning, knowledge, and all that stuff? How are all those things set up? Because if those things are out of line, then you know everything else is out of line. And so you always go back, and I think it's funny because a lot of us, we will run to trying to figure out why our life is haywire, but we don't look at the systems and actually clean out what needs to be cleaned. It's like, it's like, you know, when your house gets dusty really fast, your automatic reaction needs to be, I probably need to change the air filter. Right? But no, you just, you just waste your time and you clean the house more. When really all it took was one switch of one filter. It's clogged. It's dusty. Right? One shift. 
one move, one, one change in what you've been doing to set you into a trajectory of something that is great. There, I, I, it was funny. I looked up, like, ways to spring clean, like the, the top ways to spring clean. I don't know. It was, it was just a random put in. I just thought I'd just type it in. It says you have to make a schedule. You have, to, you, have to, you have to, like, schedule out your cleaning day? I don't know. It's kind of weird. I thought it was funny. You have to declutter. So declutter before you actually, like, get into cleaning. Here it is. You always work from the top to the bottom. And then, and then it says walls and windows need love, too. Right? Because we always forget about those, you know. Lived in my house for three years, and I don't think I've ever washed the windows. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Walls and windows need love, too. And don't be scared of the kitchen and the bathroom. Right? And then, and then last, sit down and reflect on all your hard work. That's great. That was, that, was, that, was, that was good. That was good knowledge to know. Like, I needed to know that stuff to be able to, you know, jump in and tackle my spring cleaning, right? The funniest part is people actually look this stuff up to tackle their spring clean. That's the funny part to me. Like, somebody actually took time out of their life to write that article for you to learn how to clean. Like, what is the next generation going to look like? You know, like, oh, my word, I can't. Is it okay if I rat you out just a little bit? Uh, not you, Br Brittany. But my eyes are looking everywhere. Uh, okay, something, something that I do for my wife all the time, I always fill up her car with, with gas. Just, just what it is. I know, she, I, whatever. I'll ask for forgiveness later. So since I met her, her dad filled her gas tank up when she was living at home. When she moved in with me after we were married, all you sickos, when she moved in with me, I just started taking care of her. I, I just filled her car up, and so, you know, whatever. And so I think in the 11 years that we've been married, maybe five, she's filled up the car. Maybe. <laughs> she said maybe three. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. It's just something like when she goes outside, I just want the car to be filled for her so she can go and she doesn't have to worry about it. I don't know. It's just something. So we've always done it. Well, the other day. I was out, and she texts me. She goes, the car is empty. <laughs> the next text rolls in. What do I do? <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is simple. You drive it, right? In, in my mind, you know, you drive it to the gas station. You open up the, you just stick it in there. You know, you have to pay for it. You need to stick it in and pull the thing. To me, it's like super, super normal. For her, it's like out of the box, not, not normal at all. Like this is like, uh, like I'm almost getting sweaty having to go here. And like, what do I do? Like this is crazy. But you, she did it. You did it. She did. She did a great job. She even got the right, she, she got the right, the right gas. She didn't put diesel in it or anything. We're good. Car still runs. But the thought occurred to me, how many people are living the same way where they just haven't tapped into all that God is? And so when they come into church and we talk about all these things, you know, hey, read your word, hey, pray, hey, praise, hey, you know, do these things. And you're sitting there and you're like, I've never done it before, and so it's scary to me. I don't really know how to jump in and tackle because I've never done it before. You don't know this about me, Zay, but I'm kind of a hoarder. My house is a little dirty. You know, I know you don't. I know you don't get that, but but I, I've never really ever taken the time to clean from top to bottom. I've kind of just walked in here and and saw everybody and what they did, so I kind of just mimicked what they did. And then when I go home, my life kind of looks the way it did before God. I just wear a pretty good facade when I'm here. But when you actually come in and you learn who God is. And you start to apply it, and you start to clean out the things that need to be cleaned out. And then you start to apply God in the areas that you know you need to apply Him. You start to do the things that you know you're supposed to add in. And then pretty soon, things start to line up, and, and, and pretty soon, the fear has gone away, and it's, I just want all of them. I, I, I don't really care anymore. I, I don't care what you think about me. I don't care that you're judging me right now, because I'm going all in with you or without you. Because I have seen the benefit of applying him in my life. Amen. 
I, I titled today The Way In because I feel like a lot of us, anybody, you, you guys, uh, anybody watch like UFC or anything like that? You like boxing maybe, boxing UFC, nobody, nobody really get in? Okay. It's just me. I just, I love it. I don't know why. I love it. Brittany knows when I'm watching UFC at night because I, I kick in bed or, you know, I'm like, ooh. Like, you know, it's just like, ooh, it just like gets me. I like, they get caught in the corner, you know, it's just somebody's pounding on their face. I'm like, I'm feeling for them. It's just like that. We have a connection at this point, you know. I don't know. There's just something about watching someone beat the living daylights out of someone else that gets me excited. Like, I love it. I don't know why. I don't ever want to be in that situation, but I love watching people in that situation. I love it. It's something about it just, it just gets me, you know. I, know. I know the training that's gone in for that one ring moment. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes. And so I love the weigh-in. The weigh-in like my favorite part because, you know, they come face-to-face and then they got to do the gloves to the face. And these guys are so cocky and, like, so full of themselves, you know, they're like, oh, I'm just going to kill you. You know, and then, uh, like, half, literally more than half of the times they're always, like, you know, getting a little poke in or jab in and taunting each other with their voices and whatnot. I'm going to kill you. Your mom's not going to be proud of you after this fight. Like, you know, just like totally stripping them of all of their, everything that they ever had. Anyways, you know, and then they get in the ring and, and then they go to town. I love it. But it's funny to me, I, I, I watched a fight this last week. Uh, uh, the YouTube, two YouTube guys, Logan Paul and KSI, and they got in the ring and boxed. Anybody seen this fight? Anybody seen? Okay, so we got some, oh, we got some supporters here in the house. Let's go. So they go to box, right? And, and they, come to the, they come to the weigh-in, okay? They come to the weigh-in, and Logan Paul is literally an idiot. He's, like, talking down to KSI, like, hardcore, like, stripping him of everything that he is, right? He's just ripping him a new one. And KSI just kind of chills out. You can, you can see it. He's just kind of, like, hanging out there, whatever, looking around. Logan Paul's like, look at me in the eyes, man. Where are you looking? You're not looking at me in the eyes. Look at me in the eyes, man. What's up? You're not looking at me in the eyes. Ah. I'm like, oh, man, this is all it's going down. To me, the entire time, I'm like, oh, Logan Paul's going to drop this guy to the ground because he, Logan Paul's, like, way taller. He's got a longer reach. His biceps and triceps are like Brandon's, and he's been on roids too. You know, it's, like, it's just, like, huge, right? So they come into the ring, the ring day, right, the ring day. They call them both in, you know, Logan Paul, oh, I'm Logan Paul, man, I'm cool, whatever. So they come into the ring, and, and they get in, and, and ding, 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 right, and they come in, and Logan Paul, there's six, there's six rounds, right, six rounds. First two rounds, Logan Paul is dropping punches. Dropping punches. And I mean, every, this is literally, he would drop a punch, slam it, and go, like, in the ring while they're fighting, like, back up and, like, make a face at him, right? I'm like, ooh, this guy's cocky. But I like it. I couldn't turn it off. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's, oh, it's so good. Round three, Logan Paul comes in. At this point, the cocky man's falling because exhaustion is setting in. And KSI, the guy that's kind of chilled out this whole time, is ready to go. Comes in for round three. I mean, literally round three, four, five, and six just wipes Logan Paul out. Every round. And I'm just like, I'm loving it because I love an underdog. I mean, if you're coming from the bottom and now you heat, like, let's go. Like, that's all, like, I love it. I'm all about it, right? So at the end, you know, uh, it, it, they, they called it a draw. And uh, KSI was the, uh, the original winner, and so he took the fight. And I thought about this, and I thought, how many people come in to the ring so cocky, so, so overconfident, but yet they forgot who they really rely on. And so when they come in and they just run their mouth, you know, you know, you know not to hang around people that just run their mouth, right? Because people that just run their mouth and have no fruit, that's why I hang out with Ryan, because he has an orange shirt on. So you hang out with people that have good fruit. I told him today, I was like, dude, you're so having low-lying fruit today, I feel like I can grab it. It's, it's a beautiful shirt, and if you want to gift it to me, I would love it. Thank you. But we have to watch what comes out here. Because if this doesn't match this, and if this isn't connected to this, there's a, there's a, there's a problem that happens. There's a problem. That's why, that's why sometimes it's better to say nothing. Go ahead and spring clean out your language. I want to read today from 
Judges chapter 7 about good old Gideon. Verse 1, it says, early in the morning, Jeroboam, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the, the hill of Morah. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. If I say, this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say, this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog, as a dog laps, from those who kneel down to drink. 300 of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites home, but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Now the camp of Midian lay below him in the valley during, during the night, the Lord said to him, said to Gideon, get up, go down against the camp, because I am going to give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen to what they are saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Pura, his servant, went down to the outposts of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, all the other eastern peoples had settled in the valley, thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sand on the seashore. Can you imagine that scene, coming over and seeing these, this vast army of people? Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, this can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. Can you imagine Gideon and Pura? I mean, they're outside, the, they're outside the tent listening to this conversation. Can you imagine? I mean, if I was Gideon, I'd be elbowing Pura over and over again. Be like, dude, are you carrying this? Come like, on. Like, what? Like, like, like the conversation, they already know they're doomed. Oh, I'd be, I'd be hyped. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed down and worshiped. He turned the camp of Israel and called out, get up. The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them with torches inside. Wait a second. I think he forgot the real, the real weapons. He placed what? Trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them. 300 men against a vast army, and you put dang trumpets and empty jars in my hand? You got rid of, of 30, 1, and 700 something men? And you're gonna hand me a trumpet and a jar? Sometimes obedience doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. God, there's no way, there's no way you are asking me to go in with three, these 300 guys to just lap like dogs. That's how you picked them out. You said lap like dogs. And you want me to go in and fight th with them? And you're going to hand me a jar and a trumpet and be like, yo, oh, Teach yourself into death. Are you kidding me? Is this, is this real? Wait, what 
what key are we playing in? C, G, what are we, I don't even know. What do you, what do you want me to play? I've never played trumpet before. I don't have a trumpet lip. Nobody told me to shave before I came. I can't play a trumpet with a beard. What? Like, can you imagine the thoughts are like, hey, we're going to go, we're going to go fight, fight them. Look at all of them. Look, you can't, sand. You can't count on just like the sand. There's a lot of them. Here's your weapon. I want you to take this trumpet. And I want you to take this empty jar. I know it doesn't look like much, but we're going to go win. Just follow me. I'd be like, Gideon, you've been drinking. Like, something's up, man. What are you smoking? Like, I, I don't know if I can follow that. Like, this doesn't feel right. Like, this doesn't look right. Like, I don't know if I like this, man. Like, what, what have you been doing? Like, who you been hanging out with? He's like, no, 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 no. You, listen, God told me. Watch me, he told them. Yeah, we're going to watch you. We're going to watch you die, and then we're going to run. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I do the hokey pokey, so do you. <laughs> I'm serious. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp, blow yours and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. Just after they had changed the guard, they blew their trumpets and broke the <laughs> I'm sorry. I could just picture it. They blew their trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. They shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran crying out as they fled. Please just picture this with me, please. Like, realize, like, Somebody wrote this in the Word of God because it was actually happening. Oh, my word, they're coming. Like, like what? wait, wait, like, what? I, I, wait, I don't get it. Like, replay, rewind, please rewind. Like, I don't understand it. Like, you, you play, and you, shh, like, what? Okay, guys, you ready? Key of G. Here we go. One, two, three. Dun, da, 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 da. And crash. Ksh. And confusion. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. This, this shouldn't be. But obedience. But obedience. When the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord, oh, huh, right, when I do what you say to do, then you come in and do what you said you were going to do. Right, right, I understand, yeah, yeah. The Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other. What? Oh, now I can definitely picture this one. Oh, I can picture it. You got Jeremy and Steve and Brian sleeping in a camp, sleeping in a tent. All of a sudden they hear, dun, 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 crash. And Brian's like, I remember when you stole my Twizzler, you idiot. Just stabs him right, right there, just dead. Right? Steve's no more. And then Jeremy's like, well, well, Brian. Was it Brian? Was it, is that what I said? Was it Brian? He's like, well, I remember when, when, remember when we were in fourth grade and you said you were going to go to the Army and then you did it and I had to force you. Remember that? And pretty soon you got two guys dead so far. He runs out of the camp. He's like, who else wants Eddie? And he just starts to go to town killing anybody. He's like, I'm sorry, Sean. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Here you go, Steve. <laughs> no, I don't even know why I just did that, but it's okay. I don't know why I want to kill everybody, but it's just happening. Like, what? Like, what? My dad is watching on live stream right now saying, why? Did I... <laughs> 
Why did I leave him? I'm sorry, Father. Forgive me, I know not what I do. But can't you just picture it? I mean, they're all out there. They don't know why they're doing it. They're just stabbing each other, killing each other, while the dang trumpets and George are sitting on the sidelines watching. Wow, this is crazy. Gideon, did you really think it would work? Well, I mean, I didn't, but now it's kind of cool, isn't it? I mean, we're not doing anything. You got, you got a broken jar in front of you, dude. And they're just killing each other. One by one. The army fled to what caused the men to the camp and turn on each other with their swords. I'm a little winded. The army fled to Beshida toward Zara. I got a little cramp on my side. It's working its way up. Is this a bad side to have a cramp on? Uh, any nurses in the house? Okay. Ooh. Jumping down to verse 24, Gideon sent messengers throughout the hill country of Ephraim saying, come down against the Midianites and seize the waters of the Jordan ahead of them as far as Beth Vera. So all the men of Ephraim were called out and they seized the waters of the Jordan as far as Beth Vera. They also captured two of the Midianite leaders, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb and Zeb at the winepress of Zeb. They pursued the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan. Oh, guys, I love this. But God. I know it doesn't feel right. I know it probably doesn't look right. But when you fall into line and you say, God, I am spring cleaning myself of everything because I want to be brand new for you to use, a, a fresh wineskin for you to fill. Lord, whatever it be, you tell me, and I will fall into a line with obedience. You show me where to step, I'll step. You tell me where to go, I'll go. No holding back anymore, God. I'm done with giving you words without action. You know, sometimes, sometimes you just have to like, you got to like praise yourself out of the mess. You know, like, like it gets so dirty, you got to like call a backup company to come in. You call the company, you know, 1-800-WE-BUY-JUNK. You just bring them in. And they just do a full clean out. Because sometimes, sometimes it just gets, it gets overwhelming. Sometimes it's just too much, and you can't handle it on your own. You start to sing praises. You just start to, just start to sing. You start to sing praises. Anybody ever do that? You just start to sing praises. You just start to sing. You just, I mean, you just randomly like break out. You're sitting in the shower. You know, like rubber ducky, you're the one. And then like just like turns over into. Jesus, <laughs> you're like, whoa, where'd that come from? But you, but you have to because rubber ducky wasn't doing it for you. So you knew you had to switch because there has to be a spirit shift. You can't praise your way into victory. You, you, you can't praise your way into victory on Baby Shark. It just won't happen. You can, you can praise your way into insanity. <laughs> But you can't praise your way into victory with a song that has no depth. You can't fill your mind with all these worldly things and then expect a spiritual outbreak. You can't listen to 1021 all the way to work and then get there and think you're going to be filled. I'm sorry. I know you think that it's okay, but you're not going to be filled. And when you get filled... Does this, does this piano work? Can I use this piano? Where's Ryan? Is that okay if I play this piano? I don't really play piano, but 
Ooh, sorry, Landon. That's coming out of my pay. Okay. Does this work? This works, right? How's this? Ooh. Woo! That was cool. Okay. I'm sorry if I disrespect you in any way, Miss Judy. Ooh, wow. This is cool. Uh, this is an oldie, but a goodie. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. Okay, see, but that doesn't do any depth because there's no like there's no depth to it, right? There's there's just nothing. There's nothing there. But I wonder, I wonder. I didn't say it was going to pretty. I just we're just going to do it because and that's what you all get you all get consumed with. You, you say oh, I don't know how to do that, so so why would I? But I don't play keyboard. I haven't played keyboard in years. I don't even. It, I'm just glad it sounds good. That chord sounds good too. But what if you just like broke out and just started singing? Uh, this is like one of the only songs that I ever knew how to play. Jeep, jeep, tap, tap, jeep, tap, jeep, tap, jeep, tap. Like, like, what if you just broke out? Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. Right? Like, like, what if you just change the tune of your praise? Like, what, like, what if, what if, like, <laughs> like, okay, I don't really, I don't really know how to sing, Zay, so, like, I don't know really what, to, and I, I don't really know how to play, but that, that's okay, because you don't really always have to have the right voice or the right song. You, you need to praise God with your mouth, with your heart. Let your praise rise up so that the rocks don't cry out for you. I don't know. I just, you know, honestly, I feel like we are so held back because there's there's moments that you could praise that you choose not to, and and there's there's things in your life that if if you would just be obedient and say, I know I'm not going to be the best. I know it doesn't sound the greatest. Okay, whatever. If you just do it, watch the army fall. Like, like everything that, that you feel is attacking you, just watch, just watch it start to drop off. Just watch it. Can you all sing it? Can you sing it so you can sing it better than me? Ready? Jesus, we love. Oh, yeah. Oh, how we love. Jesus, we love you. Come on, let him let him hear you. Okay, this time actually sing it like you mean it. Ready? Again. And Jesus, we love you. Oh, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one. I'm just crazy enough to think that if God can use trumpets and God can use jars 
and God can use Gideon, and God can use me. I'm not defined by what you think I am. I'm sure people looked at Gideon and were like, why are you getting rid of all these men? What are you doing? He's like, hey, God told me, so I'm, I'm doing a little spring clean. I'm, I'm, I'm just cleaning it up because I know that I, I don't want the credit for this. God wants the credit. And so if he's going to get the credit, I've got to eliminate every possibility of me getting the credit. Whoa. Whoa, Gideon. Wow, really? Yeah, because you see, like if I was there, you see, Zay, when, when God asked me to step out, I had a little pride saying, God, what if I don't win? You know, the, the, the pride was there, and, you know, like in my mind I thought, you know, what, but, but what if? Like what if we lose? And I get rid of all those men, and, and these 300 and something men are going in, and we're all going to die. Like what if? But I knew that God would never lead me astray. And so I just acted. Oh. Stand with me, please. What if I was just obedient? What if? What if I just stepped out? What if I didn't care anymore? What would happen if I just did what God asked me to do? If I just praised the way I knew I could? What if? Miss Judy, can you play that same song that I was just playing? It doesn't matter, whatever. Can you just play it better than I've played it? It doesn't matter, whatever, key. It doesn't matter. Ryan, turn her keys up. Judy, like, yeah, like play it. Like really play it. Yeah, keep going. you do that? Like, this, you're using the same dang keys I did. <laughs> do it again. Make it pretty. Don't, don't act like me. Oh. She's even got like those little in-between notes. Like just so pretty. I wonder if our praise here on earth sounds like the way I play it. And I wonder, by the time it hits God's ears, if it sounds like that. This is why we praise. We praise for breakthrough. We praise to see things done. We spring clean. We get rid of all the old habits. We get rid of all the old ways so that when we praise, this is what God hears. Right here. But I don't know how to sing. I'm a real boy. That <laughs> does sound like that. <laughs> a little Pinocchio. Uh, anyways. But I, want, I wonder if this, this right here, this is what God's hearing. Because he doesn't care about the way that you sound. He just wants obedience. He doesn't care about the way you look. Because if he did, he probably would have given Gideon a sword or a gun or something. But no, he handed him a jar and a trumpet and he said, make it work. Oh, what would happen if we became an obedient people to say, God, no matter what, I put aside all my pride. I put aside everything that I worry about and I just come to praise. Come on, every, every hand in this place, just, just lift it up to God right now. Give him all that you are. Go ahead, just, just surrender, a full surrender. Say, God, everything that you have for me that I have held you back from giving. Right now, God, I open myself up. I open myself up. 
I open myself up. I open myself up. I open myself up. Pour out, fill. Press down, shaking together and overflowing. Sometimes it's our own voice that like annoys the daylights out of us so we don't talk out loud because we're like, I don't want to hear my own voice. I want you real quick just to say, I love you, Jesus, out loud. Go ahead, just in your own, go ahead. Just, I love you, Jesus. Go ahead, you can just say it over and over again. Nobody around you is judging you. Just, I love you, Jesus. I love you so much. I don't care anymore. I just, I love you. I, I, I'm obsessed with you. If you're sitting here today, well, now you're standing. If you're standing here today, you say, I'd say, I need a spring clean. I, 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 need, I need a spring clean. I need to, to get rid of some old habits. I need to get rid of some of my old things because they're cluttering me up to where my ears are so clogged. I've lost touch with the Holy Spirit. I just need a full declutter. I need to hire. 1-800-WE-BUY-JUNK and I just need him to come in and I need him to clean me out. If that's you, I want you to, I want you to come forward. We're going we're gonna to pray for you today because we here at the Power Place believe in the power of prayer. And it doesn't matter what you're facing or what you're battling. Today, God wants to set you free and he wants to clean you out in Jesus' name. Come on, you just need a full declutter. You need a full declutter. You say, God, rearrange rearrange my heart, rearrange my mind. Lord God, everything that, that has been cluttering me up, Lord, right now I just pray that you would wash it out in Jesus' name. Wash it out in Jesus' name. Clapping on his way up because he's so excited about it. I love it. Let's go. There's power in freedom. There's power in freedom. When you step out and you say, God, clean me up. There's power in freedom. Squeaky clean is the best kind of clean. It's too good. Yeah, come on, man. Listen to that nudge that the Holy Spirit's putting right up, right in your in your gut. He's like, come on, do this. Son, daughter, come on, step out. A good spring clean is good for anybody. Yes. If, if I could have some, some prayer warriors, come lay hands on me. Let's, let's pray for these. Let's believe that God is doing things that we cannot see, doing things that we cannot do. Yes. If you're up here at the altar, go ahead and just give it to him. Jesus, I give it to you. Lord, I give you everything. I give you all of me. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord, and we love you, and we thank you. You're a good God. You're a good Father. You are the God that makes me brand new in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, things are being made new now in Jesus' name. The declutter is happening. Everything that has congested your mind is being wiped away now in Jesus' name. All the thoughts that have, have plagued you for years are being wiped clean in Jesus' name. He's going from the top to the bottom and making you brand new in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Made brand new in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.